think about this for a minute. Linking and unlinking. And rather than wait to a crisis, rather than wait till you really are in a lot of pain, proactively do this. I will share with you that two to three times a week, I spend 90 minutes doing this. And every day, unless there's something really big going on, I spend at least 10 minutes doing it. 10 minutes, I read all the beliefs I'm gonna teach you, 10 minutes a day at least I spend reinforcing them, and two to three times a week I spend 90 minutes doing, doing it. I do this, I've created it. There's no reason or excuse for you guys not to be doing it, and that's the level of dedication you really are gonna to wanna to have to really make huge progress. And if you do this, if you proactively, before there's a crisis, before there's a problem, design this and reinforce it every day, then you're gonna be ready. Now I wanna give you another very profound little piece of information. It's in all your notes. So here's what, I wanna discuss it. I'm gonna tell, look up here. I'm gonna give it to you, we're gonna discuss it, and then you can write it down. I want you to get my transmission, because I do transmit things. Not diseases though. You can look through your problems and, and crises and try to find your strengths and your abilities. Or you can proactively design your abilities and your strengths and look through them at your challenges. Does that make sense? In other words, you can stand inside all your crisis, stand inside all your challenges, stand inside all your shame, your sorrow, your anger, your pain, your fear, and from there, try to find your resources. But it's like starting out with glasses that are coated with sticky molecule dog shit that just doesn't want to come off, and you're scrabbling to get it off. You can stand inside of that and try from there to find your resources. Or you can proactively, every day, I don't care if it's just for a little bit every day, and some days more, some days less, you, hello. Uh, you can every day reinforce and build on your resources so that when challenges occur, you're, you're prepared and you're ready. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yes? yes? Very useful. Again, it's not glamorous. It's not particularly sexy, but it is powerful. All right, so let me start out by giving you a drill. Because I believe that one of the most profound things you can learn to do to begin to unlink from what, to begin to see what you're doing from a place of clarity so you're no longer bound to it and see it in a way where you don't rehypnotize yourself with it. This is a very important point. I want to talk to you folks at home about this too. Let me talk about reinfection, the problem of reinfecting yourself with problems. One of the principles I've taught for many years, I started teaching this right around the time I did the Unstoppable Confidence Tapes, back in 1994. This is extremely important and critical in doing any kind of change work, whether you're gonna do it with yourself, if you're a change worker at home, you know, if you do any kind of healing work, this is profoundly powerful. Do get that I'm a strong believer in positive programming, you know that, yes? Often what happens, though, is people dwell on mistakes. There's emotion attached to things, and by continuing to look at your past, what you do is you reinfect yourself with it. This is a profoundly powerful principle. Please pay attention. There's no difference. There is no difference between what you dwell on mentally and what you rehearse mentally. What you dwell on, your brain is saying, okay, I'm rehearsing this, and what you rehearse is what you get. When you dwell on mistakes, if there's a lot of loaded emotion in your past, so you're constantly emotionally drawn back to dwelling on your past, what you're inadvertently doing without knowing is rehearsing that. You're telling your brain, you're relinking to it. To use the yoga term, you're reinforcing that samskara. You're feeding it with emotion, with breath, and essentially you're believing that you can't really change it or you're doubting you can change it. Whatever you put a lot of focus, attention, and energy on is what you're going to get. So when you dwell on your past, that person who fucked you over, or that mistake you made with Sally Jean Rotchkrot, or the business deal that you blew, whatever it is, what are you doing? You're in it. I want you to see the mechanism of this. What you're doing is reinfecting yourself. You're putting, this is your focus, intent, your vision. You're putting all of that, here's your mental eyeball, into your past. P-F-U-P, past fuck up, okay? 
puff up. I've come up with a new acronym. I'm really good at this, right? AFC, puff up, pass fuck up. What you're doing with your brain, your brain is going, oh, look at this. This is what he wants me to keep doing. Okay, it's what he's putting his focus on. So next time I'm in that same situation, I'll do this again. Do you get it? What you, dwell, what you dwell upon, your brain takes it as rehearsal. And what you rehearse is what your brain is going to say it out loud. Out loud, everyone. That's what it's going to do, correct? This is a really profound challenge in an area of life where you're stuck emotionally. See, <clears throat> this is a learning curve, okay? Let's say this is a learning curve for any kind of skill. I don't care. Let's take a skill that has no emotional attachment to it. Learning to play golf or learning to drive a, a, a stick shift, okay? Whatever. Maybe some of you had traumas around golf. Your stepdad beat you with a golf club and zipped you up in the bag. I don't know, but the rest of you fuckers, <laughs> fuck y'all, okay? Here's a learning curve in something that's emotionally neutral. Or emotionally positive. You have good connections to it, okay? That's going to take some effort, right? To learn a complex skill, correct? Yeah. What about a learning curve like speed seduction? It has a learning curve. Speed seduction is not necessarily the easiest thing to learn. It's also uh, emotionally charged. Uh, hold on, yeah, I'm going to get there. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, so let's take a, a difficult learning curve that's also very emotionally charged, right? It's emotionally negative. You've got a lot of fuck-ups in the past, a lot of pain, a lot of doubt that you can even make it work, and you're constantly looking into your past. So sometimes when you can pump yourself up into a really strong state, you'll do the, you'll do the new behavior, right? Other times, when you're dwelling on mistakes, your brain's going, oh, he wants me to do the old behavior. What do you do? You slide back down the learning curve. Yes? So what happens? Something that should take three months takes 10 years and you've memorized every pattern I've ever done and you still can't fucking make it work because of this. Does that make sense? This is the structure of learned helplessness. Learned helplessness has a lack of awareness, but it also has a process where you're constantly reinfecting yourself. So this whole notion of unlinking from all of this is very practical. It can take a complex learning curve that can take a long time and collapse it into something that takes a very short time being emotionally aware and being able to have emotional choice makes you much, much smarter in the sense that it makes you a much quicker learner. Does that make sense? Yeah. These are very practical tools. I'm not teaching you to save the whales here. 